Um, there, we are allowing for the site, the form of mathematics, actually to develop in different ways. And but I suppose that depends on how mathematicians are going to sort of communicate or want to communicate. Um, so if you, if you if you look back. Uh, we're still doing what we did 100 years ago or 50 years ago in the sense that well, in fact, we now type our own papers rather than having technical typists, but we still produce papers. And we used to have preprints, and now they're at the archive. That's just an easier way of having preprints. The question is whether there's going to be something that's actually new that turns up as far as communication goes. And there's been lots of ideas, but nothing much has happened. Uh, you know, there's this math overflow, which I think is mm -hmm. interesting, where people can electronically ask questions and, and get answers. Well, that's just a more elaborate version of the fact that you, if you had a question and there was somebody in your department, you went to the right person and asked them a question. Well, now you can do it. You know, you just do it. You can ask more people through math overflow. So that's really very much different. It's just easier to do. We used to go to conferences in order to talk to people. Well, now. So it's almost trivial to organize a conference, whereas before you had to write all these paper mails and stuff. Mm. So all the, all the old ways are being made easier. Yeah, I mean, I think the important thing is this um, uh, reviewing business, because so many authors think that as long as they've sort of written something and put it down, then somehow they've staked out some territory. There's sort of no quality control. There's no, um, you know, um, uh, thought about the presentation of ideas, about the uh, about the sort of, about the community in which you're working. It becomes sort of self, self, self of it. All you have to do is put stuff in the archive now and then sort of do nothing else. Well, we've already had a version of that with mathematicians who will lecture about a theory and talk about it and say they've done it mm. and then not blow it up for years. Mm. It was true of Thurston. It was true of Sullivan. It was true of Fermat. True of Fermat. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that was bad. We didn't yeah. like that. Uh, and we don't want to promote that. We don't want to make that easier. No. I'm afraid we would if we didn't have journals and referees. Uh, you know, people, well, what would happen? People who don't get things written up would write up a lousy version because they know that it didn't have to go be refereed. And, and it'd be like, in a way, it'd be like music where you just have poorly produced stuff. It's mm. out there. I mean, it's true. It has advantages. Mm. Lots of small people can get a start that way. Uh, we don't really know uh, how the publishing will uh, look in three or five years' time. But do you think that we'll be able to use this to influence it? And in what ways would you like to see it being well, I'd like I would like to see the journals thrive, and take over more and more, and have offspring and other other people start to write. Uh, the issue is going to be the one of financing, because mathematicians have never been on the head of the page charges, and they, they actually mathematicians aren't going to pay the money for their And then the question of whether they can get the money from grants. I don't think they're going to. They may get it from grants. Governments may. Governments may get some money from grants. I mean, when they, when they require the paper to be published in an open access journal, then they sort of have to put some money. I completely agree with you about this business of the mathematician just not being used to or wanting to either to get grants or to even to know how to get grants. One of the reasons we've made this journal free for three years is simply because we think that that's a reasonable amount of transition so that does allow people to get used to it and to think, ah, there is an alternative way of, of sort of publishing their research that is sustainable and is a sort of ethical, should we say. But if they, if they uh, so this will be good in, in the sense that if we, after three years, we may have demonstrated that this is really a high quality journal where you want to, where you want to have a paper. So these journals are only going to be a success, Rob, if people actually communicate, um, if people submit papers to them. And um, so, uh, why do you think people should submit papers to them, and how are we going to get that? Well, we know that. Well, they're going to submit because they want to be good guys. Hmm. I mean, that's it's partly virtuous, and it's partly like being a free book. You know, don't oppose the global warming and such things. It's 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 a virtuous thing to do. And the other thing is that the, these journals are going to be very high quality, and hmm. people will want to have a paper in there. Yes. Now, you could say, well, I send it to Pi rather than Annals. But, you know, Annals takes years, and 
the journals are backlogged and so on. And so we should still get good papers. Um, so as long as they're free, we sh they, sh they ought to do it because it's a good thing to do.